Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look behind the scenes at issue uh, number 117 of my newsletter, Too Long Didn't Read. Um, this is Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon that I'm working on sending this, uh, sending this out. Um, it's a, a busy week once again. Uh, a lot of different things happening uh, at work and in school and out of school. And so this is basically like a week notes edition of what happened and what's involved in uh, my newsletter. So if we take a look at some of the materials that I've shared, um, one of the things I was very ha uh, happy to see come out online was this post that I shared through the ILA Literacy Daily blog. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot. Uh, this is primarily motivated by I was in a classroom doing observations uh, last spring uh, in the middle of all the presidential deba debates here in the U.S. And one of the classrooms had uh, it was a, a fifth grade classroom and students were watching the, like the morning news report as the day began on CNN. And I saw a lot of just the the dialogue and the vitriol that was uh, being shared in the debate. And I and I looked around the classroom and and I felt awkward and, and I was I, and I was wondering, like, what the students were thinking as they were watching this stuff. Um, and so it, it that has had me thinking um, ever since that point. And so I wanted to put together a piece on what to do if and when students see some of these, you know, harmful discourses coming into the classroom. What do you do as a classroom teacher? What do you do as a parent? How do you address some of these things? I had a bunch of videos also that I shared. Um, my YouTube videos, I'm going to start to include more videos from devices. This is something I've wanted to do for a couple of years now. Uh, I'll, I'll do video tutorials. Uh, my hope is to do those much more regularly. But as I do these video tutorials, one of the challenges that we have is that a lot of, you know, I, I want to be able to show what's happening on different devices. So one of the things that I've been testing out is this app, uh, Reflector. I've used Reflector back in the day, um, and it worked relatively well. There's a couple different tools that do this, but basically what it'll do is it'll, it'll send video from your Android device or iPhone or iPad, it'll send video from your devices to a computer screen. So if you use AirPlay on your iPad or iPhone, you're sending your screen over to your TV or your Apple TV. Um, if in my house I have Google Chrome, uh, a Chromecast on every single TV, and so we can send video from my phone or from my iPad over to the TV. Well, this pretty much does the same thing on your computer. So the nice thing is that you can install this. It was 15 bucks uh, for each license. And basically I'll send video over to my computer screen and then record the video from there. Um, I like it for the most part now. I'm still tweaking it to figure out the best uh, way to make it look. Um, and so I'm still messing around with it. I'm trying to do you know quick videos and send them out so I can give people guidance on what to do. Um, so I'm relatively happy right now with Reflector 2 and I'll have some... Uh, behind the scenes and, and reviews on it in the future. Getting back to the newsletter, um, I, I shared out a, a animated short on uh, Carl Sagan's Pale Blue Dot monologue, definitely worth uh, reviewing the video and clicking over to Brain Links and elsewhere to, to get the reading done. One of the things I've noticed, you know, typically when I do TLDR, um, I will try and synthesize and put a little bit of my spin into or my opinion into the post. But I, for the most part, want readers to think on their own and, and you know, not assume that I am the, the, the be all end all in a lot of this content. And so sometimes that uh, readers like that. And a lot of times, uh, sometimes readers like it and sometimes readers don't like it. Uh, sometimes I'll get feedback saying, you know, this is TLDR. You're supposed to just give us the gist so we don't have to click through. Um, but then again, there's sometimes that I, I want you to click through, that I, I want you to read and figure out what this means for you. Um, so I felt like this, uh, this issue had a lot of those sort of links. So there was this piece by Clint Smith in the New Yorker talking about a piece by James Baldwin uh, titled A Talk to Teachers. Definitely recommend clicking through and seeing what Clint says about all this, but then also read Baldwin's piece and think about what this means for you. Um, you know, there's a need to take a little bit of time and reflect and think about what this means for each individual person 
And what does this do for your perspectives? Um, you know, I should not be putting my perspectives or my bias into what you think. Also recommend checking out this uh, research report by the Incredible Data and Society Research Institute. This is by Mary Madden, who I've shared a lot of Mary's work uh, throughout the years. And so it looks at, um, you know, high need, uh, so low SES populations in the U.S. and their use and understanding of privacy and security online. And the news really isn't that surprising, but sometimes we need research to show us what we think is happening out there. And so basically some of the takeaways are that, you know, high need, uh, low SES populations realize the harm in, in privacy and security online, but then they don't really know if they have the access or the strategies to deal with that. Um, and that's terribly problematic given uh, here in the U.S. we talk about the Department of Homeland Security is is planning on starting up their their uh, plan to they're planning on starting up their plan. Um, they're getting started with their ideas about collecting social media info and search history from in immigrants. Um, so definitely something to watch out for. Definitely something very problematic, at least in my eyes. Um, throughout the last couple months in TLDR, we've talked a lot about social media and in the political elections and sort of discourse and what's happening not only in the u.s but in in a global sense and this piece um pulls it all really nicely together uh chris schaefer uh has a lot of uh his blog and then also uh his his collective blog i think it's uh data for democracy um he basically says you know he unpacks all of this and talks about the fact that you know twitter is for all intents and purposes lying to us um you know and he he pulls in uh the data for democracy blog is what i was thinking about um but basically chris pulls in a lot of these different elements and says that you know facebook and google and twitter and a lot of these organizations they you know they tell us that they don't know what's happening they tell us that they don't know what's happening on their platforms um but for all intents and purposes we realize that these governments and entities and, and different organizations have been spending a lot of like dark money on targeted ads that people don't see when we add that into this vehicle where algorithms double and triple down on our signals and basically feed us what they think we want to you know read and learn about and also meshed with that fact that uh, for the most part adults you know individuals do not really critically evaluate what they read and they're not really looking outside of their stream to diversify or question or problematize what they're reading this is a really bad trend and so social media and social networks you know need to take a look at their role in all of this and figure out okay how can we be more honest and transparent with uh the individuals you know yes government but also individuals so this is something that i'm still trying to figure out how i feel about it but you know, I, I have serious questions about it. What Chris does in this post is he sort of unpacks how he's going to address these challenges and what he plans on doing. So I definitely recommend looking at his strategies that he lays out in the end of this. This is a, a, a news piece that came through um, here in the local newspaper. Um, and it talks about the South Carolina teacher shortage. I've talked a little bit about um a symposium that I went to recently where we were looking at the teacher shortage and trying to figure out how to change the narrative about education and get more teachers into classrooms. Well, this piece talks about one teacher in particular that is from overseas, basically here on a visa to teach. And so there's a lot of schools in South Carolina that are pulling people from overseas and bringing them into the U.S. just so, to let them teach. Um, and this person in, in particular, uh, at least from the news story, she's doing a really good job and school loves her, kids love her, parents love her, like she's doing a great job. Um, on one level, this is something that I think that we are, are seeing a lot more of in the U.S. We're seeing a lot of people be, you know, they're brought into the country because they're willing to accept those teaching jobs. I think that, you know, there's a lot of people on my Facebook feed that were like shocked that this was happening, but I don't think it's that big of a surprise. Um, this is definitely happening. Happening uh, On a second level, 
uh, this teacher is doing a great job, but I know for every one, there's about 10 that are having a hard time because teaching, especially in, in high need districts is a tough job and especially tough when you don't have the cultural awareness and, and, you know, growing up in the system to figure out what all of this means. So definitely something to dig into, definitely caused a lot of discussion uh, on my Facebook feed. So it was interesting to see the, the different points of view. Um, but this is a question that we have to ask ourselves about teaching and learning and education and our future. Along with those same lines, uh, I definitely recommend checking out. There's a piece in The Guardian talking about, you know, adjunct professors and, you know, some of them that have to revert, revert to, um, you know, different ways to bring money in. That's pretty much all I'm going to say. Um, but we really need to think about teaching and learning and think about our, you know, how we want to prepare learners for the future and how, uh, what sort of role that has in our culture in, in society. Um, and then one of the last pieces that I shared was this piece. It was a, an excerpt from a book, uh, all about silence in the age of noise and thinking about our use of the smartphone and, and, you know, how much silence should play a role in what we do. So it's a, a bit of a way to, to hopefully bring about some balance in all of what we do. In terms of making, I put in a little ad here for uh, Stoic Week 2017 that's getting started on the 16th of October. I did it last year, really enjoyed it. Um, I, I've been getting into more and more Stoic readings um, just as a way to sort of balance myself and, and try and think about, you know, what's really important uh, in all of the different hats that I wear and, and, and my response to daily events. Um, so definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you're someone that's blogging or getting your blog started up. It's a good way to build a personal learning network and also find things to read and write about. Uh, I shared it in a piece by Viktor Frankl talking about stimulus and response and our, uh, how we react to different events that are out there. Um, you know, this is a, a quote that spoke to me throughout the week um, because a lot of, of, of events that were happening uh, behind the scenes. Um, one of the other things that I'm doing this weekend, sometimes I like sharing things that I'm working on or learning. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I, I brewed a batch of Oktoberfest. Um, and so right now it's in my fridge, basically in a bucket like this. Um, you know, I have, it's lagering, which means that it basically needs to ferment, uh, in cold temperatures. So this bucket, a uh, bucket like this is sitting in my fridge right now. And this weekend, what I need to do is I need to transfer it over to a glass carboy, something like this here. Um, and it's not going to be in this like brick oven looking contraption. I'm going to transfer it over to glass and pretty much exactly like this and it's going to sit in my fridge and I need to basically lower the temperature um, by a degree or two over the next uh, four weeks. So that's on my radar for today. A lot of sanitizing and transferring it over and then cleaning and um, throw a thermometer somewhere on that device uh, so that I can watch it and slowly lower it down to uh, freezing. So uh, this is a, a homebrew that I've been working on. Uh, this is my first attempt at lagering the homebrew, and so that's a, a, a new thing that I'm testing out and trying to figure out. Um, and last but not least, one other thing that's been a lot of fun this week is I've been, uh, I haven't really talked about this a lot. I will have more news soon, um, but I've been involved in getting started a North American branch of Gap Mill for UNESCO. Um, so the Gap Mill is basically the Global Alliance for Partnerships on Media and Info Lit. Uh, we are starting up a North American branch. I am working with a lot of other highly trained, highly qualified, more qualified than I am individuals to get this up and running. Um, and so hopefully I'll have some news soon um, to, to figure out ways that we can make this organization viable and and ways that we can have a good web presence and so it's it's really exciting um and this week we had i i, I sit on different committees and working groups as we get this started and this week one of the roles was i'm on the formation committee so spent a little bit of time this week talking with some of the other um i guess founders and and we're just figuring out how to get this up and running and and have more of a 
global international presence as we think about media and info lit. So I'll have more of this uh, in days to come. So once again, this is uh, week, uh, this is issue number 117 of Too Long Didn't Read. Uh, if you have not subscribed already, I definitely recommend subscribing. You can go to my website and go to wioburn.com slash tldr. That's for Too Long Didn't Read, and basically it's a it's a weekly, free, quirky, informa uh, informational newsletter to basically help you think about literacy, technology, education, and what all of this means. By all means, uh, if this video meant something to you, if it uh, provided you with some guidance, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't like the monotone, dr the, the monotone droning voice that I had this morning or this afternoon, give me the thumbs down. Um, but subscribe by all means and let me know what this means to you in the comments. Have a great rest of the week.